All right, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Royal City Community Church. Sorry. Welcome to Royal City Community Church. We're glad you're here with us. Thank you. We welcome you, whether you're here in person or online. And we're just going to open with a word of prayer just to take a moment. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much that we can be here with you this morning to give you all the glory and all the honor that is due your name. We thank you for your presence that is here with us. We welcome it. And I just ask, Father, that you are with every person. Whatever their week was like, whatever their week going forward is going to be, Lord Jesus, we just ask that you are providing whatever it is that we're needing. Whether we had a good week or a bad week, Father God, you are with us. You never forsake us. I thank you that you are going before us this week, being a light to our path, and that you are healing whatever happened during the week. We know life can be challenging, whether you've had a bad day, a bad week, a bad year. I just ask God that you are comforting, you're wrapping your loving arms around those that need it. You are being the provider for those that need it. You are being the healer for those that need it, Jesus. And I thank you, God, that our worship this morning is a sweet, sweet sound in your ears, Jesus. We may be few in numbers, God, but that doesn't matter. We're here to give you all of our hearts. We're here to give you everything, Father. This isn't a performance. We're here to worship and honor you, God. That's what our hearts are longing for, just to be in your presence. We just want to soak in your presence this morning, God. Thank you, Jesus. We ask all these things in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. I'll just ask you all to stand to your feet, and we're going to just enter into some a type of worship.
praise Jesus. Fill our hearts, God. Thank you, Jesus. Fill our hearts for what we long for, which is more of you, God. We want to be overcome by your presence, Jesus, so that it's overflowing out of us into those around us, Jesus. Let us become so consumed and filled with you, Jesus, that everything else just bounces off of us, Jesus. Thank you, God. We welcome you here. We welcome you. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us, God. Fill us. We want more, Jesus. We want more, God. We want more of you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We want more of you, especially in the difficult circumstances, God. Just continue to fill us. This is your house, God. Every, it says every time, I'm going to say every day, as we enter your heavenly sanctuary, God, to seek more, to seek more, to seek more, to seek more, to seek more of your power, to seek more of your love, to seek more of your joy and your peace. God, help us every day to be energized every time to enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power to drink in more lord ora basiki ando Mora basik to drink more of your glory to drink in more of your presence jesus God, we thank you for your tender mercies mean more to us than life itself. Father, how we love and praise you, God. Daily, Lord, let us worship. Daily, let us worship you passionately with all our hearts. Our arms will wave to you like a banner of praise. Let our arms be raised. Can you lift your arms? Can you lift your hands this morning as a banner of praise? Our hearts are yearning for more praise. Let the praise of God just rise from you this morning. Let the praise of God just come out of you this morning. Let your praise arise. Hallelujah. Let's just clap our hands this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning. 
We need to remind ourselves of your goodness, of your faithfulness, of every miracle you've ever done. I don't want to focus on what I can see, because what I can see sometimes drags me down. God, I want to be so focused on you. I want to be so focused on your goodness and of thanking you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to continue to do in my life, God, because I know you're not finished. I know this is just the beginning. You're just getting started, God. Your goodness is running after us all of my days, all of your days. His goodness is running after you. Thank you, Jesus. Focus on his goodness. And just keep speaking his goodness. Everything he's done. Thank you, God, for whatever it is that he's done in your life. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for the miracle that I've seen. Thank you for the food that is on my table. Thank you for the job that I have to go to. Thank you that I get to be here this morning worshiping you with the freedom to worship you, God. Thank you that I have a vehicle to get into to go home. Thank you, Jesus. Everything I have is a blessing, God. It is your goodness. Continue to pour out your goodness over us, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we thank you this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy and your grace running after us today. Right now, right now, may we not, as Trisha was saying, lose sight of that. It's so easy to get caught up in ourselves, but don't lose sight of his goodness and his mercy that runs after you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless him. Can we just lift up our voices to him? Let's begin to speak in your heavenly language. Let's begin to give him all the glory that's due his name this morning. He's awesome, God. He's worthy. And we're not just saying it, church. He is worthy. He is an awesome God. He is Jesus, Messiah. Oh, he's Jesus, Messiah. The name above all hallelujah he is the king of kings he is the lord of all we thank you jesus thank you lord we just worship you this morning jesus may we never forget the goodness the goodness of god this morning in jesus name amen thank you lord i just want to remind you this morning that he became sin for you and me he became sin who knew no sin and it's so awesome with Easter approaching that's what he did for us God sent Jesus to the cross for you he knew no sin he knew no sin we thank you Jesus how you humbled yourself how you carried the cross
satisfied with where we're at. God, we want to continue as long as we've got breath in our lungs, Father God. We are going to be in pursuit of you, Father. So we thank you today. We look into your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you want to reveal to each heart today. Lord, you do the work in each one of us today, Father God. Oh, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory for all of that now. In Jesus' precious name, everyone in agreement said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue this morning. Last week we talked about um, experiencing the, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And if you remember, just really, really quick, there was uh, two points that we brought out. And that was basically the gist of the message. If you want to, uh, if you weren't here last Sunday, you can go and uh, do that online. But just quickly review. Uh, the first priority, number one, was we need to make His passion our priority. We need to make His passion our priority. So in other words, we've got to be in pursuit of Him. We've got to be hot after Him. We've got to, to desire Him above all other things. Thank you. The scripture says, the deer pants for the water. So, our, so our soul longs after you, Lord God. So I trust that each one here, that that is a, an ongoing desire, an ongoing passion, an ongoing zeal for the things of the Lord. This, number, number two was uh, to preserve His unity. Preserving his unity. And we talked about um, at the tail end of the message. We brought up Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. We know what happened to them. Yeah. Uh, they were really in, uh, too, soon, too much into preserving the unity uh, of, the, of the church and of the Lord. And uh, they got to see Jesus quicker than they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, number three. Number three. Uh, the third and final path to experiencing full fellowship with the Holy Spirit is to practice His disciplines. Practice His disciplines. And I trust you found Romans chapter 8. 
And let's look at verses 5 through 7. Romans 8, and we're going to read verses 5 through 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, I need to get a big Bible with bigger print or something, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I got it all in one paragraph, and the, the numbers are all kind of smushed in there. So, verse 5, that those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. All right, so here's the key to the successful practice of spiritual disciplines. Discipline your mind to focus on the realm of the spirit. The discipline is a matter of setting your mind on the things of the spirit. In fact, Proverbs 23, 7 puts it this way. Uh, as a man thinks within himself, so he is. As a man thinks within himself, so he is. Now, if you're walking wrong, it's probably because you're thinking wrong. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. If you're, if you're talking wrong, it's probably because you're thinking wrong. See, to the extent that the Spirit of God controls your mind, He is able to lead you in new spiritual directions. Now, if I were to take out my pen, okay, and I begin to write, I'm writing with my pen, I'm not online, I actually use a pen, okay? <laughs> I'm using my pen, I begin to write, I can record pretty well anything that I want to record. But if I'm going along and I remove my hand, what happens to the pen? It simply falls on the paper and lies there. My pen has no life in and of itself. Now see, now my pen, this, this writing instrument right here, it contains all the raw materials that I need to write with. Okay? but it has no writing ability of its own. Okay, so if in order my, for this pen to function, okay, it must be joined to the life of my hand. Okay? And when that happens, well, we know what, what happens then. My pen can form letters that it could never form by itself. It can compose clauses and, and, and phrases and, and paragraphs and punctuation and, and begin to make sentences because it's in my hand and my hand is alive. See, when you connect your life to the life of the Holy Spirit, He can write things that you can never write on your own. Come on. He can achieve things that you can never achieve on your own. But if you live in the flesh, if you set your mind on the things of the flesh, you will drop like that discarded pen because there's no spiritual life in your flesh. See, our challenge then is to cultivate minds that are set on the things of the Spirit. So, how do we cultivate minds fixed on the Spirit? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> By practicing the Spirit's disciplines. Now, as we do these things, they become, if I could put it this way, they become avenues over which the Holy Spirit guides us to the practical daily experience of the fellowship, basically the life and peace that God, God's Word promises to those who set their minds on Him. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 tells us that. So I want this morning, I want to consider three of what I would consider the most crucial spiritual disciplines. Now there's no surprises here this morning. Um, the Holy Spirit isn't playing hide and seek with us. You know, boom, I didn't see that coming, you know. If you want to pursue intimate, enriching fellowship with Him, the path is clearly marked in the Word of God. Amen. Now the first discipline I want us to consider this morning is prayer. Amen. Prayer. <laughs> the simplest definition of prayer is communion and communication with God. Now, I want to show you why the practice of prayer is so crucial as it relates to enjoying the fellowship of the Spirit. See, what prayer does, prayer takes you out of your realm. Yeah. Takes you out of the realm of the flesh. 
and transports you into another realm, the, that of the Spirit. That's right, come on. Now remember, we're seeking the mind of the Spirit. Okay, we're seeking the mind of the Spirit so that we might what? That we might fellowship with Him. To do that, we have to enter the Spirit's realm. Well, prayer will take you there. Hallelujah. See, so that, and as long as what happens, if, if we stay self-centered, okay, as long as we are self-centered, we cannot be God-centered. See, and, re and what prayer does, prayer replaces that self-focus with a God-focus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Prayer lifts you out of yourself to a sphere inhabited by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. See, when you enter His realm, He meets you for fellowship. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, our discipline of prayer should include things like Thanksgiving. Okay? Thanksgiving shouldn't just wait till a week in October. Okay? Because Thanksgiving relates to what God is already doing for us. The old hymn, count your blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving reminds us that we're talking to a God who keeps us when we want to throw in the towel. Come on. A God who stands by us when we think that we're not going to make it. You know, if he hung with us yesterday, <laughs> he's going to be there today. Come on. Thanksgiving reminds us of that. Okay, and when we pray, include confession. Uh-oh, come on. Come on. Confession brings you back into fellowship with the Spirit. Now, I've said this many, many times. Uh, and this is not just dealing with, you know, God. It's dealing with interpersonal relationship. Keep short accounts. That's right. That's right. Okay? Well, you don't know what that individual did to me. Does it matter? You know, I've said this many, many times, too, as well. You know, I think I recently just said this. If I haven't, it's probably bears repeating again. Um, Joseph Garland had preached a message one time. You know, you, you hear messages, you remember bits and parts, and you remember whole things. I trust you remember things that I stood up and shared. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's quickened things to you. Amen. But Joseph Garlington, he spoke this message, and I remember this line that he, that he said, and it stuck with me. <laughs> and he yeah, preached this probably a good 30 years 30 ago. Years ago yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be right, or do you want to be reconciled? Yeah. Do you want to be right, or do you want to be reconciled? Well, you don't know what they did to me. Hey, you can be right till the cows come home. Jesus returns. <laughs> Until Jesus returns, yeah. But you know what? Do you want reconciliation? Do you want to get peace? Do you want to get that thing resolved? Do you want to get that thing settled? Well, da 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 da. You don't know what they did. I'm right, and I know they're wrong. <laughs> At the end of the day, does it matter? <laughs> Confession brings you back into fellowship with the Spirit. Confession pleases Him. You know why confession pleases him? Because it means you feel the same way about your sin as how he feels about it. Come on. And how does he feel about your sin? <laughs> it's wrong and it has to be dealt with. I mean, sin is a huge, huge, huge barrier to experiencing the Spirit's fellowship. But confession, what does confession do? Confession tears down that wall. Confession tears down that barrier. And along with thanksgiving, Come on. it prepares the way for you to bring those petitions that you have and those needs to the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, the, the, there's nothing mysterious about prayer. Okay? The only reason we don't feel more comfortable in prayer is that we don't pray enough. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's it. You don't pray. Can't put it any other way. That's right. That's right. Come on. But if you're serious, Come on. if you're serious about cultivating the mind of the Spirit Come on. and entering the realm where He lives, mm. you need to put some muscle into your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to practice the discipline of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, growing up, you remember, I, okay, I, I like to read comics when I was a kid. 
And you remember they used to have the little ads in the comics, and, and there was the guy, the skinny guy, okay. and he was getting the dirt kicked on him because the big tough guy, and he went, and, well, what did he go and do? He bought that, uh, yeah, he worked out, he, he was eating, drinking that uh, protein, protein drinks and stuff like that. <laughs> Got all these muscles in this bully came along the next time, come to kick sand on him, he's looking for the scrawny kid. He wasn't around anymore. <laughs> Okay? Hey, prayer's going to build those spiritual muscles. So the yeah. devil, he comes around. You're not that scrawny little, you know. Yeah, Come on. Right. Yeah. Don't show me right. down. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Need to practice the discipline of prayer. Come on. Put some muscle in your prayer life. Come on. Amen. You say, well, I don't like to think of prayer as a discipline. It sounds too much like a duty. Sounds like too much like a job that I got to do. Okay. <laughs> I mean, aren't I supposed to pray because I want to instead of because I've got to? That's a good question. It's important that we make prayer something other than just a duty that we perform that we have to. Like, well, like, well, I've got to do this. Like, you know, how I can mold when it's nice out and the weather's nice. I got to go mow the lawn. You know, on a hot day. How do you keep prayer from becoming just another duty on your spiritual to-do list? Well. Let me say first that prayer is a duty in the sense that it's a vital part of the Christian life. God's Word tells us to pray. Okay? In fact, God's Word tells us to pray how? Without ceasing. Okay? In fact, there's nothing wrong with practicing prayer as an act of daily discipline until you get to the place where it becomes your daily delight. Come on. But the question is still valid. The best way I know to keep prayer from becoming routine and automatic is turn your focus from prayer to God. Yeah. For example, for example, eating. Come on. Eating is a duty. <laughs> it is, in the sense that we have to eat to sustain life. But how many of you here today would say that you approach eating as a chore? <laughs> Cooking. <laughs> I mean, we take great delight in eating. Come on. Okay? I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. We eat when we need to eat. We eat when we don't need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us even eat when we aren't supposed to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this? Because we enjoy the act of eating. I mean, we, we prepare food to, to look appetizing. We, we season it to taste good. We make meals a, a, a time of intimate fellowship with, with family and with friends. I mean, do you not look forward to your next meal? I mean, sometimes I sit down at lunch and I say to my wife, what's for dinner? I haven't even finished eating lunch yet. <laughs> we look forward to eating. Well, hey, maybe if we started to approach prayer the way we approach eating, come on, maybe something will begin to happen. Come on. Prayer is your time to gather around the table for warm, close fellowship with the Holy Spirit who can comfort and help you in any situation. And hey, you know what? Jesus Christ, he's your elder brother. Amen. You know? And, and with a father who delights to hear from his children, you can't go wrong. Amen. 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 See, there's delight in the act of praying itself as you, as you pour out to God, your heart out to God, pardon me, and, and you sense his presence. You sense his, his loving attention. Hey, prayer, is, prayer is not an end into itself. It is our invitation to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to seek His mind on the things that we're facing. I, I mean, communication and communion with God is the goal of prayer. So the question is not whether you feel like praying today. The question is, do you want to know the mind of the Spirit? Come on. Do you want to worship and adore God? Do you feel like talking to somebody who can do something about your situation? Do you want to talk to somebody who can change a desperate circumstance for a fellow believer or meet the deepest need in your family? If you do, 
Prayer is going to be absolutely no problem. You'll pray and you'll find joy in it. Amen. Now, the second discipline of the Spirit is reading and studying the Bible. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. I mean, if you want to cultivate a mindset on the things of God, you need to get in the Spirit-inspired Word. Amen. Yeah, amen. Spirit says, if you want to fellowship with me, spend time in my Word to you. Mm. See, we often do with the Bible what we do with prayer. That is, we make it something other than it was intended to be. You know, the Bible was not written as a religious textbook. Come on. Okay? Think about it this way. Think about the Word of God as a love letter from the Holy Spirit to you. Yeah. Okay? Now, a lot of us aren't going to sit down and really get a lot of enjoyment out of reading a textbook. <laughs> you know, think where you're in school. I mean, you got those books for school for the classes. How often did you really want to be in those books? No. Like assignment, test, whatever. Ugh, really want to do this? No. See, and if we have that mindset, well, the Bible's just like a textbook. But hey, you know, how about we start thinking about it? Um, as a love letter from the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, as I said, a lot of us aren't going to read a textbook, but not many of us are going to pass up a love letter. Amen. Amen. I mean, try opening your Bible and say, hey God, what is it that you want to say to my heart today? That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. What do you want to change about me today? Come on. Come on. Come on. What do you want me to understand about you today? See, now you have a love letter and not a textbook. See, when you receive a love letter, I mean, a lot of people, when they get that love letter, I mean, they cherish that thing. Some of them, they, I mean, they even carry it around with them. And they'll read it again and again and again. I don't know if you ever got a love letter and you read it once, and like, well, that was nice. <laughs> Throw it over your shoulder and be done with it. No, if you got a love letter, you read that thing over and over and over and over again. Amen? Amen. Amen. You linger over the words. That's right. You hear in them the voice of your loved one. You meditate on their meaning. You know, and, and, and scripture meditation is like marinating a fine cut of meat. Back to food again. I don't know what that's up. <laughs> but marinating a fine cut of meat. Mm. Meditation is marinating the truth of God. Letting it sit, allowing it to penetrate every fiber of your being. See, when you do that, suddenly you're not just reading a verse like John 3.16. Well, you're going like, whoa, wait a minute. For God so loved the world, that means me. Come that on. means me. Wow, like, goodness me. Like, you know, think about this love. We were, I just want to add this little thing from uh, the Bible study that we were doing on the book of Ephesians this week. Really good, yeah. And chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, you can mark it down. But, in fact, let's turn over there. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 3 through 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as, he, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Uh, and it goes on in verse 6. But you know what? You think about those verses right there. God's eternal, infinite love. Come on. Amen. He loved you and you and I so much. before we were even born. Amen. Before we were even born. Actually, before the foundation of the world was laid, He loved us. Amen. Before we even existed, God knew you and loved you. I mean, I don't know what that, to me, I read that. It's staggering. Yeah. It's head shaking. Yeah. <laughs> Before God had even spoken an Adam into existence, wow. we were on his heart. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. In eternity past, God has set, or sorry, had set his affection upon us. Yeah. 
See, now as limited creatures, we can only comprehend love in time and space. But God's love is an eternal, always and forever love. Okay? Love was not created when God created us. God is love. And He's loved us always. And the result of this love, the result of this love, God chose us to be His. He adopted us into His family. I mean, comprehend only a fraction of the extent of the fullness of God's love. Thank you, Jesus. you know, God, he, he doesn't just love you or, or put up with you. <laughs> he loves you, and He will never unlove you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's go. Amen. Amen. So I said, you're reading a verse like Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 5, John 3, 16. Wow, that means me. I mean, God. You know, God so loved the world. God so loved. Put your name in there. God so loved me, he gave his only begotten son. As whoever believeth on him not perish, but have what? Everlasting, eternal life. Wow. Come on, hallelujah. God has given me eternal life. Yes, that's right. That's right. I mean, you get the idea. For, for some of you, I mean, you know, this is old hat. You don't need another lecture about how you should be praying and reading your Bible. Okay? You just need to hunger and thirst for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Third discipline. I know we'll love this one. Third discipline of the Spirit is trials. Hallelujah. <laughs> trials are what happens when God removes the training reels from your spiritual life. You know, if you... you, you You've had children, and you know you get that bicycle for them, and you got the training wheels on the back, which makes it nice and easy for them to, to, to ride. But one day, those training wheels have got to come off. In fact, when I learned how to ride a bike, I learned how to ride a bike. Hmm? You didn't have any training. Yeah, I learned how to ride a bike on a bike that had no seat. So I had to stand up as I was riding, and that gave me the balance. That's how I learned to ride wow. the bike. It didn't have a seat on it. Oh okay? But anyway, so training wheels give that a child's bike a nice, steady feel. But they're meant to be temporary. Okay, if you see somebody, you know, in their 30s, <laughs> riding a bike with training wheels... Anyway... <laughs> See, now when you remove them, when you take those training wheels off, there's a risk mm -hmm. that your child is going to, you know, wipe out, smash, crash, fall, and get a skinned knee or a skinned elbow. But unless you take off those training wheels, your child's never going to go anywhere or grow anywhere. See, unless the Holy Spirit takes the training wheels off of our spiritual life, we're never going to learn how to get our balance. We'll never learn how to pedal for the glory of God, if I can put it that way. We'll, ne we'll never learn to steer like we ought to steer our lives. So the Spirit has to remove the training wheels. But far too many Christians are living off the spiritual successes of others, rather than developing the spiritual vitality for themselves. You know, and if you maybe you, I don't know, how many of you have ever broken an arm or a leg? I broke a toe. You had to call it a tow truck, right? Uh, <laughs> you break your arm or your leg. Or toe. Or toe. Okay? Um, but what would happen if it didn't heal right? Sometimes the doctor has to snap the bone back into place. And guess what? It's going to hurt. You might have to look away. You might have to bite down on something, you know? Well, every now and then, God allows us to be broken so we can experience the release of the Spirit. See, when we're broken, we need to have that broken part reset. So the Holy Spirit will come along and say, well, you know what? This is going to hurt a little bit. It's going to hurt a little bit, but it's necessary. So look the other way. <laughs> Set your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Back to Romans chapter 8.
Romans chapter 8. And let's look at verse 13. It says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. There it is, right there. The secret to a life of intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's you doing it, but not by your own power. You do it by the Spirit's power. So whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do on the positive side or put away on the negative side, you can do it because your human spirit is harnessed with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not the power of positive thinking. Okay? This is not making New Year's resolutions. Okay? This is a Holy Spirit resolution. And New Year's resolution says basically this is what I'm going to try my best to do this year. And probably last about as long as it takes you to get it out of your mouth. <laughs> but a Holy Spirit resolution says, this is what I'm going to do by the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, when you, um, when you go uh, travel and you're getting to your terminal, and your gate, pardon me, your gate before you take off, and by the time you get through all of the airport customs and they you know, do all the stuff that they need to do and the screening and everything else, uh, it's why they suggest you get there a little early, but for those that are running a little bit of late at the time, they have that, that moving sidewalk. Okay, you've seen that feature, obviously, in airports. Um, now, these things are especially helpful when you have a short flight connection and you have to get from one terminal to the other. And you just miss the shuttle bus. Okay. Uh, you can really move on those things and it will help you get to your gate a lot quicker than if you're walking under your own power. Now, I, what always cracks me up is that there's people that are on those things, and they're not walking. You see them? Yeah. You know, the, the idea is that you're supposed to be rushing to get to the thing, and the thing's moving, and they're just standing there, going along, like it's a ride, you know? <laughs> the idea is to get you moving so you can get to that next gate. And I love it when there are, like, two or three of them abreast. They're all standers, like... <laughs> If you're going to be on it, at least move to the right, you know? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so you can really move on those things. Yes. And it'll help you get to your gate a lot quicker if, instead of you were walking under your own power. The Holy Spirit, put it this way, your Holy Spirit is like that moving sidewalk. Okay? When you start running, he comes alongside and underneath and gives your feet wings. Not Red Bull, okay? Gives you your feet wings. <laughs> To take you where God wants you to be. That's right. Okay? Amen. You have to get on the sidewalk yeah. through prayer and obedience and Bible study. Yeah. But it's the Spirit who's carrying you. That's right. See, and when you see that you're making up lost ground in your life, you're having strength where you normally would be weak, and having victory where you normally know only defeat, you will then know <laughs> what it's like to experience the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed, please. No one's looking around this morning. Just want to ask one question. I know it's easy again to look here and see those that are here, but I don't want to presume. You may be here today, and you've never made the decision to ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. You've never made that decision. We quoted that scripture, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He said, put your name in that space. And you can't, couldn't put your name in that space because you've not come to that place of asking Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. If you'd like to do that today, say, Pastor David, that's me. I need to make that decision today. I want to ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of my life and it says he will give you eternal life. Life eternally with him. Anybody here today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You say, Pastor, maybe that's me. I need to make that decision today. <coughs> say, well, I've gone to church my entire life. And that may be true. You may have. But if you've not come to that place of asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life, then you're just, you're just coming to church. That's all you're doing. 
But if you know in your heart, you made that declaration, you made that confession and said, Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. If you know you've done that, then you know that you have eternal life. But if you've never done that, anybody here, just quickly. Slip your hand. Praise God. I trust everyone here has made that choice and that decision of Jesus Christ to be the Lord. Maybe you're here today at one time. You have given your life to the Lord, but your walk with Him is not in the place that it should be. You kind of walked a little bit away from Him. And I said this many, many times. You may have turned your back on God, but He has not turned His back on you. And you want to rededicate your heart and your life afresh and anew to Him today. You'd put your hand up. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, born again, we're all in a uh, right relationship with God. Uh, maybe you're here today and you've never received the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit, evidenced by speaking with other tongues. You'd like to receive that gift. You know, and it's like that, you know, you can pray, and you can, you can pray, but sometimes there's just that time when you need that, the Holy Spirit, and you've got that heavenly <coughs> language, and sometimes when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit makes up that difference to that heavenly language. And you'd like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit today. Evidence by speaking with other tongues. Anybody? Today at all. That's given to us for power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father God, we just thank you right now. Oh, hallelujah. God, we, I just pray for each one today. And every head is bowed, every eye is closed, please. You know in your heart. We've talked about these disciplines today. We've talked about uh, the prayer. We've talked about getting into the Word of God. We've talked about trials. And I just pray that each one, you know, if maybe you're not in that place where getting into the Word of God and praying is the priority that needs to be. And so I would encourage each one today. Okay, your head is bowed, your eyes are closed. God sees your heart, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or anything like that. But God, I just pray, Lord God, for each one today, that we make these disciplines, Father God, we make them a priority. Amen. We make them a priority in our hearts and our lives and our walk with you. God, the importance of prayer, not just as a duty, Father God, but Lord, to be having that, that fellowship with you, to hear your voice speak to us, to get that direction and leading and guidance, Lord God. God, just impart upon each one of us today. And like I said, I know we've, we've had messages about this before, but I just want to just reemphasize the importance of that for us today. Praying, having that quality time with him. You say, well, I don't have enough time in the day. It's important that we make time. It's important to make, you know, turn off the television if you need to. You know, whatever needs to, there, you know, there is, there's a time and a way that you can make that time for prayer. There's that time and, and way that you can make time to, to be in the Word of God. You know, you go online at the, uh, on your phone, they, there's a Bible app that you can download. And you can, do, there's a, uh, many, 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 many devotions that you can, you can uh, listen to and go through. Uh, just encourage you, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something particular, use that Bible app. And there's different translations online. But the importance is whatever you use, just get into the Word of God. Get into the Word of God. Make it a, make it a vital, <laughs> vital, vital importance to make that date with the Lord every day. Every day. Maybe you're a morning person. Maybe get up a little bit of the extra early in the morning and, and do that. Maybe, you know, afternoon, you're an evening person. <coughs> Carve out that time in the day. Well, I work and I come home with the children. Well, you know what? Hey, you take that time. You make the time. If it's important enough, and it should be, we make and take the time to do that. You know, and, and you don't get spiritual brownie points because you do this, but you'd be wanting to do this because you, develop, you want to develop that intimate relationship with God. I mean, I, I don't understand why anybody would not want to. Why would you just want something on the surface? Oh, well, God, you know, I've done what I needed to do today. Boom, that's done. Or, you know, well, if I happen to not be in it, what's the big deal? Hey, if I had that, if I had that approach to Roz, you know, like, it's going to require a little bit of work. It's going to require some effort on your part as well. 
There's, you've got to make that sacrifice. And your children as well. We make the time for what's important for us. We take the time and we make the time for what's important. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for each one, Father God, that they just, again, that hunger and that thirst and that desire for the things of you. A passion and a zeal, Lord God. Continue to, to pray that over each one, Father God. And God, none of us has arrived. None of us has got to that place, Father God. So each and every day, Father God, Lord, just continue to renew that passion, Father God. Continue to renew that love, that hunger, that desire for the things of you, Father. We bless and thank you for that now. We give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Every head is bowed, every eye is still closed. Anyone here today, you're sick in your physical body, you need a touch of healing, you lift up your hand. Our sister back there, she's got her hand up. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you comfortable with somebody coming and putting their hand on you and pray for you? Okay. There's a lady behind you guys here. Do you want to go and just lay hands on her? We'll just pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And your name's Mary Lou. Is that correct, Mary Lou? Yes. Okay. Well, Father God, in Jesus' name right now, we pray for Mary Lou right now. Father God, we thank you for healing power. We thank you for healing virtue to flood into her life right now and into her body. We thank you that by the stripes of Jesus that she's healed, whole, and well. Father God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God, that that Lord of us under right now in Jesus' name. Healing power, healing virtue flood into her right now by the stripes of Jesus that she's healed whole completely well, Father God. We thank you that you are no respecter of persons, Father God. So we're calling out on her behalf today, Father God. Touch her, heal her, strengthen her, restore her, Father God. Bring healing and wholeness and wellness to her body right now. We thank you by the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, Father God, you do what you are famous for, Father God. So touch right now. Touch her right now. Heal, restore, and make well, Father God, to your glory, your honor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we know there's many within the body that are not well today as well. So, Father God, we lift them up as well as we've been praying for our sister there. Father, we thank you for those that could not be here today because of sickness or what else is happening, Father God. So, Lord, we lift them up before you today, Father God. Touch and heal and restore them, Father God. God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are their healer, Father God. So, right now. God, right now, right now, right now, God, you begin to do that work. You begin to reach down into that bedroom, into that living room, wherever they are right now, Father God, and touch and heal and restore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're calling upon that redemptive name, Father God, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. He's not the Lord that might heal. He's not the Lord who might do it if he feels like it. He is the Lord that healeth you. The Lord that healeth you. So right now, claim that healing that belongs to you by the name of Jesus and through the stripes of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray over the offering. I want to thank each one that's been faithful to bring their tithes and their offerings. Uh, Lord, as we say many times, you're able to, uh, through your offering, you can do e-transfers. You can drop it in the bucket here on Sunday uh, for first fruits. Anybody for first fruits? I can pray over your first fruits. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you right now. Lord God, as our brother has brought his first fruits offering to today, Father God, it's a part that's representative of the whole, and we thank you that this calendar year, 2024, is sanctified, set apart wholly to you, Father God, and he's going to walk in the absolute fullness of everything you have, want, and desire for him, Father God. Not one good thing is going to be withheld. In Jesus' name. Lord, others that have brought their first fruits as well, Father God, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you that same prayer, Father God. 
this calendar year, Father God. Oh, we're going to see that poured out in abundance, Father, in Jesus' name. To your glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, thank you for your faithfulness. I uh, just continue to I uh, thank those that have been faithful with their tithes and with their offerings and continue, please, to do so. Just want to quickly draw some announcements to your attention, just reminding you, of course, uh, of prayer. Praise God, we've been preaching about prayer. I'll uh, remind you that there are opportunities to be involved in prayer through the church. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have uh, prayer on Zoom uh, at 7 to 8 p.m. So you can join us uh, Tuesday nights. Uh, the email that I send out on Tuesday gives you all the information that you need to be able to hook up with us on Tuesday nights. Uh, and we also have drop-in prayer on Thursdays, right here from uh, 11 a.m. till noon. That opportunity is available to you as well. Uh, of course, uh, this past uh, Wednesday, we started the Connect group. Uh, we had uh, the first session. We were going through Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, just because you maybe you missed the opportunity to be able to come for the, this first week, that doesn't mean you cannot come for any of the other ones. If you signed up and you still want to be a part of it, please, please, please come out uh, on Tuesday night. We're going to be discussing, or sorry, Wednesday night. We're going to be discussing chapter 2. So be prepared. If you're involved with us, you have... You should be reading chapter 2 of Ephesians prior to Wednesday evening and come prepared to discuss. We had a great uh, time. It was a blessing being able to discuss those things uh, from the Word of God on, on uh, this past Wednesday uh, with the first, uh, first chapter of Ephesians there. So we look forward to what God's going to be doing in and through that for the next few weeks. Uh, and also reminding you of the Easter family lunch that is coming up on Good Friday, March 29th. Uh, we need as many people as possible. We've been handing out flyers all around the neighborhood. We've got, I think, already on uh, the first three or four days that we've had this out, we've got 36 people already that have signed up to come for the lunch. And I know there will be a lot because as we get closer to the day, uh, it seems to accelerate. And so we were on, in touch with a lot of people that had been previously, and we're getting a good response to that. But we definitely do need you help as well. So please see Roz after the service. If not already signed up, uh, please do so. We need, but basically, put it this way: we need, we need all hands on deck uh, to help out on that day. There's, there's cooking, there's serving, there's greeting, there's cleanup, there's setup. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. So in any way that anybody and everybody can help, that would be a tremendous blessing. Amen. Just please note that next Sunday, uh, March 24th, uh, will be uh, Communion Sunday. Uh, so we will be uh, acknowledge, acknowledging and celebrating uh, communion uh, next Sunday at uh, the Elements. So encourage you to out, be out for part of that on the 24th. And of course, two Sundays from now is Easter Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. It's early this year. Yeah. So uh, we are prepared and preparing uh, for that Sunday as well, too. And please invite someone as well, too. If you know somebody that uh, uh, maybe doesn't go to church anywhere or has uh, not been to church for a while, Invite them out to the Easter Sunday service. Invite them. It doesn't even have to be Easter. Invite them out on any Sunday. Hallelujah. We've all got people that we rub shoulders with every day. And uh, I just encourage you know, to invite somebody to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't think I have missed anything. Uh, praise the Lord. We had a great time at the married couple's night the other night. Uh, it was a real blessing. Uh, we went to the Greek restaurant down the street. <laughs> It was funny, I was telling everybody about how much I enjoyed the lamb and all the guys ordered the lamb. So, but it was really good. So, really, really good time, great time of fellowship. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We'll get you to stand with me if you will, please. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father God, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for, again, for how you are, uh, what you're doing and are continuing to do in our hearts and lives, Father God. Lord, we continue. As I pray before, Father God, continue to be hot in our pursuit after you, Father God, that we are hungry and anxious and desperate for more of you in our hearts and in our lives, Father God. And Lord, as we go out from this place today, God, we go out in the strength and power of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, as always, we pray, we pray for this week ahead, Father God. We pray for the people that you're going to bring across our path, Father God. Lord, it's not by accident that these people are brought across our path, Father God. And we have the opportunity to be able to, to speak. Uh, the truth, be able to share our, our faith with them, Father God. Uh, Lord, just by, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And that opportunity to share our love, to be that love of Christ that's in us, to be on display before the world this, this week, Father God. So Lord, we thank you for those opportunities. Give us that boldness to speak and declare, Father God. 
And Lord, we bless and thank you. Your blessing upon each one as we go our separate ways today. We bless and thank you for the now. In Jesus' precious name, everyone in agreement said? Amen. 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 Our guest. Who's our guest? Yes. Oh, guest. Oh, and our guest. Mary Luke, you'll go and say hi to her after the service. Greet one another. Thanks for being here. God bless you. You are dismissed. Please see Ross for signing up as well. Amen. Hallelujah. You as well. Oh, wow. How are you doing? Good. Better? Uh, just put those on the chair. Yeah, that's good. That worked out fine. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 <